DTV. Subscribe now. Get abonniert. I'm Rixki. I'm here with the legendary bomb squad Hank Sharkley and Keith Sharkley. Welcome to the show. Tell me about your start in music. You started out as a mobile DJ crew, right? Yeah, we started as mobile DJ crew back in the 70s. <laughs> It shouldn't be that, that long, but back in the 70s, we started as DJ, DJ in all the parks, house party, high school, uh, colleges, um, bar mitzvahs, weddings. We did it all. So our record collection is crazy, really intense. To check out the radio, got to check out the radio, got to check out the radio. Got to check out the radio, got to check out the radio, keep on, you don't stop, ring the bell for the time. Spectrum City was, was the name of the crew, um, first was, it was me and my brother Hank, and then he found Chuck, then Flavor moved on the corner of our block, and then, <laughs> oh Griff, I forgot about Griff, I, I forgot about Griff, Griff. Griff, Chuck. Griff was Griff before Chuck, and me and Griff was known as the KGs. But when Griff split, split off from us, went left the group, then I took the name Wizard KG, which every, I heard a couple of people in Germany mention they knew that name. But um, so then you know, then the history came from me, Hank, then went to Chuck, and then Flav and Mellow D came into the picture. Um, then we had these other kids, Butch Cassidy and Sundance Kid. There was another MC crew. Um, And we just did a lot of local stuff. And from there, from BAU, Delphi University radio station. And that's when it started to get crazy. You're uh, playing a lot of DJ gigs lately. What was your motivation to go back into that? It was Hank's motivation. <laughs> Hank, um, Hank's been dabbling in, in the dubstep world for a while. And then when he came back to me and said, like, yo, man, we can go out and do these things um, and, you know, try to uh, set up the bomb squad. And I said, yo, man, that's hot. Let's just go. Um, I'm like a communion when it comes to music. Anything I think is good and different, I adapt to it real well. So when, you know, when Hank started hitting me off with some of the music and how it was going, I was like, yo, this is the next step, the new future. And then he came up with all the extra stuff that's like, he had his vision, as always, he always have a vision for what we do. Um, and I'm just like the engine to make it rock. It's good. <laughs> I've heard that a lot of groups that you produce were actually put together, like bands like Son of Berserk, Kings of Pressure, or the Young Black Teenagers. Is that correct? And what was the reason for that? You know, it, it, it's funny because, you know, back in the days, uh, you know, groups, there wasn't many groups that were out there and everybody wanted to be a solo artist. And one of the things that, that, that I'm not really big on and, and me and Keith and Chuck, we always talk about this all the time, is the fact that, you know, we wanted to create, the, bring the group back in situations. So we went out and basically enlisted groups. The groups that we did put together is was was like the, the, the kings of pressure. Um, um, we put together leaders, you know, um, and, uh, and of course, Son of Berserk, you, you named them right off there, and, and, and the young black teenagers. And we was always dabbling in, in the group concept, and Public Enemy is a group that we put together as well. So, so you know, when you, when you look back, I, I think that the group, you know, identification in hip hop was, 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 was important. And if you look now, one of the reasons why, to me, hip hop is, is not as powerful as it is, it's not many groups anymore. You know, everybody's an individual now. You got Flo Riders and uh, David Banners and, uh, you know, the Rick Ross. It's, everybody's all Jay-Z, Nas. It's, it's all solos now. You know, there ain't no crews no more. You know, and the crews is what, is, to me, has always been the backbone of hip hop. There's always been a DJ. And, and, and that's the one thing that, that hip-hop has always had. It always had the DJ aspect first. And that's one of the reasons why we decided to come back as the Bomb Squad because we're producers first and foremost. And we're DJs. We, we DJ at the same time. And we want, and, and the essence of hip-hop has always been in this foundation. It's always been in the music first. 
and and people don't realize that the, the progression in hip hop, you know, everybody looks at the rapper and they go, oh, it's the rapper. Yo, the rapper was the third an element that came onto the game. It was the DJ, then the dancers. And people don't realize that. And then with the dancers, it was the graph artists that came into the, once that triad was already set, now comes the MC, all right, which is later became the rapper. All right, so let's, let's, you know, let's keep everything in its proper perspective. And so what happened was once now in hip hop, you know, the MC or the rapper now is trying to trying to cut himself off from the DJ. So now you go and see see artists, man. You, you, you go see the groups now. I don't even who's Kanye's DJ? Music that that's being made now, that rap music, is not really hip hop. If you really want to call it, that's that's R and B. And nobody wants to call it what it really is. They they want they'll do whatever it, it, they have singing hooks singing melodies, now they even using the vocal cord and singing throughout the entire record. Those guys, and they've created what is known as, I call it the class system. You know, what is the class system? I'm in the VIP, you ain't. Hip hop ain't never been that way. We, 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 we and Keith was talking about this the other day. He said, yo man, if Keith got into the club, or Rick, if you got into the club, and me and Keith couldn't get in the club, we was outside and you, we all, we didn't have to be in the same crew, but because of the fact that we were all hip hop artists, you would go out there and make sure that we got in the spot. What is this nonsense today about this class thing where, oh, I'm bigger and better than you, so thus I'm gonna push my supremacy on you. That was what we was trying to get away from. You go, y'all, little, little, by little, you know We got the power, the knowledge, the movement, the feel, rock A super song for the cause, so Fill the lows in your brain for the episode And with this begun, it's number one, y'all Brother Black, the U.S. The Bomb Squad are really known for the noisy and hard beats uh, What made you want to ignore chords and harmonies and that kind of stuff? Uh, as stuff like you did uh, on the It Takes a Nation of Millions to Hold Us Back album you get it. Right. Well, you, you you have to understand something. Everything everything back then was was about us separating ourselves from the establishment. Right? And back in the days, R and B had pretty melodies. R and B had nice chords. R and B had the big wet snares. All right. R and B was you know you know R and B was had singing all through the wild its records. You know. Hip hop, we wanted to be the anti that. So thus, we wanted to have you know no melodies. We wanted to have dry beats instead of dry, dry snares, instead of the wet snares. We wanted to have you know ambience and noise and 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 crackle and all that and hiss and we want all that in the records because we want to make our records so far away from what is what you hear in, in R and B. So that was, you know, and that was then. But now, let's, let, let, let's jettison to, to, to today. What we're doing now is we're moving away from the noisy, you know, trying to make, tr trying to make you, a, you know, aggressive, you know, give you a migraine kind of vibration because that's what you're getting with, with the music now anyway. When I listen to the rap today, I get a headache from that crap. So why, why are you, I'm not going to make that known. Now I'm going to go back and make music that I think is more in harmony with what you're feeling. So it's like everything is a difference, you know, a difference. Now the snares ain't, ain't dry, but they're big and wet and ambient now. You know, now the, you know, the kick drum got a lot of like, got a lot of reverb on them. You know, now we're moving into echo chambers and, and a lot of delays and things so that you can feel the vibration from another perspective. And you know, that's where that's that's the where we're moving to now. Rick's PTV. Subscribe now. Get abonnieren.